SpaceX Starlink versus HughesNet and Viasat. Who's the winner? Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time today. We have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. So good. The zing, the bergamot, love it. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking a little bit about the competitors to SpaceX Starlink and are they truly competitors? Who is going to win this game? All right, and I wanna go through some information that I found here online. I actually found a really good article over at Starlink Insider, and I wanna read some of that to you and then give you my commentary, of course. And then after that, I wanna hear from you. Are you a customer that's currently using SpaceX Starlink? And if so, where are you coming from? Are you a HughesNet or possibly a Viasat previous customer that moved into Starlink? Or were you like me that had absolutely crap service from your local telco, maybe DSL or Uverse or whatever the case might be, and you said, you know what, we're gonna have to give these people a try, and you did and you like it. Or maybe you did and you didn't like it. Let me know. Down below, let's have this discussion. I just love to talk to you guys about what is going on and your thoughts, not just me just talking here. Anyways, before we get into this article and commentary and all the rest, I just would like to ask if you do like the video, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be very helpful. Also, if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. And if you are subscribed, thank you so very much. Click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Immediately, if not sooner. YouTube. YouTube, do it. I just want to say one thing. Some people have been telling me on the live, the JC live shows every Friday night, usually every 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Visit, come and hang out. A lot of people have told me that they have been unsubscribed to the channel and they didn't do it. So I don't know what's going on with YouTube. It's probably a glitch or something. So if you're not subscribed, consider doing so and click this button right? So when I go live, you will get that information. But when you click the button, click all, right? That somehow helps. I don't know. Anyways, if you want to contribute to the channel, there's a little button down here. You can click it and give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. If you're looking for more Starlink content, I put together a list just for you, a playlist. Check that out. Maybe I'll put a link over here. It's got over 230 Starlink specific videos in that playlist. A ton of good information that you can go through. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. And finally, if you're looking for a VPN, check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is jchristina. And at checkout, you can use that promo code or simply use the URL jchristina.com forward slash VPN. So now that all the housekeeping is complete, let's get into this article and then once again, we'll get into some commentary. What many have suspected has been extremely evident over the last few quarters, both HughesNet and Viasat are in trouble. Yeah, the reason? None other than SpaceX Starlink. We've plotted how Starlink subscribers, as well as those of HughesNet and Viasat, have fared over the past few years. Now they come up with this nice little chart. I'll show that to you in just a second. Starlink was first introduced in the United States back in November of 2020 and has since expanded into 70 plus countries. It took less than three years for SpaceX subsidiary to reach 2 million subscribers, a feat it achieved back in September of 2023. I think they're at like 2.5, 2.6 million subscribers now. It is crazy, insanity in such a short period of time. Weeks later, Starlink's residential service was made available throughout the entire United States. Customers previously had to rely on best effort service, which has now been depreciated, or customers had to subscribe to Starlink's mobile roam plan. Meanwhile, Usenet has seen the biggest drop in subscribers as a result of Starlink's introduction. It went from 1.58 million subscribers at its peak in September of 2020 to 1 million subscribers a mere three years later. 
Many of its customers likely continue to be stuck in their current contracts, so further decline is to be expected. 100% accurate here, 100% accurate. HughesNet imposes termination fees up to $400 for canceling existing contracts prematurely. <sighs> Couple that with relatively high upfront costs of Starlink hardware and it would explain why many remain subscribed to HughesNet, at least for now. The data for Viasat tells a similar story. US broadband subscriber count, which is the only sub count metric the company disclosed, peaked in June of 2021 at 603,000 customers. Two quarters later, Viasat decided to stop reporting this figure and has since resorted to saying that subscribers continue to decrease quarter over quarter. Yeah. <sighs> the flush. Instead, Viasat has begun focusing on enterprise customers, specifically airlines, a segment they wish to compete with SpaceX Starlink's aviation option. It's not going to happen. The acquisition of Amerisat, which should bolster its marine business in particular, and a shift towards a multi-orbital approach have allowed the company to stay somewhat relevant. Somewhat. On the other side, the whole Viasat 3 Americas reflector deployment debacle certainly hasn't held Viasat's cause, especially since that it's at a severe competitive disadvantage versus the vertically integrated Starlink. Meanwhile, following the launch of Jupiter 3, HughesNet introduced new satellite internet plans with download speeds of up to 100 megabits aiming to compete more directly with SpaceX Starlink. I told you guys about that a couple of videos ago about how HughesNet has that Jupiter 3 online and they are able to provide 100 plus megabits down speed, which is good but there's a problem with that. I'll get into it in just a second. The article finalizes with this. It remains to be seen whether both can stop the bleeding or whether a change in a strategic direction, most likely focusing on enterprise or government, is the only way out. Well, maybe. I just don't think that they have a way out. That's my personal opinion. Uh, let me bring up this chart or this graph that I was telling you about at the beginning. It shows the change in subscribers or customer base for SpaceX Starlink, HughesNet, and Viasat. Now, if you take a look at Viasat subscription, I mean, that thing is just sitting there dead in the water at about, let's say, 500,000, 600,000 subscribers. And when we look at HughesNet, they did a little bit better. In 2017, they're at about a million and they finally peaked out right around, let's say, 1.5, 1.6 million in 20. 2020 or the end of 2020, 2021. But now take a look at SpaceX Starlink. As soon as they came online, it was like a little slow grow for a little while. And that's when I came on board. When I came on board, there was literally 114,000 subscribers altogether. That was it. 114,000 subscribers. Now we're well in excess of 2 million subscribers in 27 months that I've been with them. It's amazing to me. But just look at that graph. I mean, anyone with half a sense that can rub two brain cells together just says, listen, these two are going out of business and they're going out of business quickly. As we see SpaceX Starlink gaining ground, what ends up happening is the subscriber base for Viasat as well as HughesNet just will slowly depreciate. That's just the way it is. People will leave. And like they said in the article, and I do agree with them 110%, a lot of it has to do with getting locked in. A lot of these companies would lock you in contractually years on end. And then what would happen is if you want to leave, they're like, yeah, it'll be $400 and then you can leave. The same thing with the cell phone companies, right? They would just lock you in and if you wanted to leave, you would have to pay two, three, four hundred dollars to leave before the contract is over and you'd have to shell out money for each one of the phones that you want to take to another service. I mean, this is what they've all done and that's why there's no love loss between me and any of them. I don't care the telcos as well as Viasat and Usenet. Viasat and HughesNet, for example, have been taking advantage, advantage, screwing the rural community for years on end with just shites service, worst service, high latency, spotty service, 
high pricing, contracts, on and on and on. They've been screwing the rural community for years. So once again, no love lost for them. And when they go out of business, which they will, we'll have a party because that's just the way it is. You get or you reap what you sow. Right? They've been nasty to customers for so long, now they're getting their just due. And they're kind of just flailing, just trying to grab onto anything at this point. And it's just simply not going to work. They will be going out of business because SpaceX will put them out of business. And this is exactly what I said many, many moons ago, 20 plus months ago, 27 months ago. I said exactly this, Usenet, Viasat will be going out of business Absolutely, 100% positively, you can look back in my videos. I also predicted that AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon will suffer in the future due to SpaceX Starlink. Now, that hasn't happened yet, but mark my words, 27 months from now, you'll look back and be like, yeah, he said that. That's exactly what's going to happen. These termination fees that you see, $400 for people to get out. That is a major, major problem. And that's why more people have not already moved over to SpaceX Starlink. But also some of you guys have told me in the JC live show that I do on Friday nights, as well as email and other DMs that you're staying with Usenet or Viasat because you're in a valley and your Starlink won't be able to see the satellites. And that could be the case, and that might be a reason to stick with HughesNet and Viasat for right now, being in such a location. But bear with me, there is going to be many, many more satellites overhead. Right now, we're seeing about 5,500 operational satellites overhead, but within the next few years, that number is going to double. And what will end up happening is you can take your Starlink satellite and as if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, instead of having to point it northerly, sometimes Northeast, sometimes Northwest, you won't have to do that anymore. Point it straight up and you'll still be able to get enough satellites to get really good service. Mark my words, that will be happening. Write it down. We will no longer have to point our dish because just simply pointing it straight up will be enough. So I wanna kinda of conclude this video with something that I think is amazing. And yesterday I was on a call. I do Starlink as well as networking consultations. I've done consultations for farms, golf courses, for many acre retreats, oil rigs, all kinds of backup redundancy for businesses, this type of thing. If you're looking for any type of consultation, go to jcristina.com, go to the shop, go all the way down to the bottom and you'll find a one hour consult. Anyways, I was on a consult yesterday and what came up was we were talking about speeds and how I was saying how speeds were getting better. And I said, you know what, while we're doing this video conference, let me do a speed test. Now this is something that you would normally not do because then you'll end up pixelated and you might drop your connection or whatnot. I said, you know what, let's just do it and see what we get. So I went over to Ookla's to speedtest.net and I did a speed test while we were online. And this is what we ended up getting, 238.48 down and 30.7 megabits up with a latency of 34 milliseconds. Wow! Do you understand how big that is? The 30 is what is really big here. And we've been talking about this. I said, listen, upstream is going to get, or uploading is going to get faster because it is mandated by the FCC that they maintain 20 megabits up not 10, 20 megabits up and 100 megabits down to get that government subsidy of $886 million, which they said, sorry, you're not getting. So they need to maintain this, but I told you guys that it was going to happen. Now that we have more and more of the version 2.0 minis overhead, those things have four times the capacity. So we're going to start seeing numbers like this, 150, 200, 250, we're seeing 238 with my test here while online broadcasting to him, right? A live Google meeting. That's amazing to me. But once again, what is really unbelievable is that 30, almost 31 megabits up. 
Those are the type of speeds that we were getting back in beta times. When I came on board 27 months ago, when there was 114,000 people, I was getting about 305 to 320 megabits down and about 35 to 45 megabits up. Then of course that really depreciate over time because we had more and more people, congestion. Once again, as I always say, if you have a pie, you can only divide the pie up so much. And once there's more and more people that need pie, the only thing that you could do is make smaller pieces, hence less data. So obviously they are figuring this out. And with that 4X, that those SpaceX Starlink satellites, the version two minis are providing, they're basically providing more pie, more data. And that's why we're seeing faster speeds. And what's really good here, lower latency. As you can see, we were getting 34 milliseconds latency, which is amazing considering I was online broadcasting at the same time. Normally our latency is right around 28 milliseconds to about 40 milliseconds. And what Elon Musk was saying is, listen, we're going to get that sub 20 milliseconds. That is unbelievable. Now, let me just kind of come right back around and why I think Viasat and HughesNet will be going the way of the dodo bird. And the reason is, even though we see Jupiter 3 with the HughesNet online and broadcasting at 100 megabits to their customers, there's two problems here. Number one, they have that data cap in place. Whereas if you go over 200 gigabytes of data, then they slow you down. Now I was hearing that they were getting rid of that, but either which way, the second issue is the major issue that will never ever be fixed by them. It just simply can't. And that is latency. We have Starlink sitting at 550 kilometers, whereas we see HughesNet and Viasat at about 36,000 kilometers. 36,000 to 550. Massive difference. Obviously, that distance is going to provide them with crappy, absolute crappy latency. 600, 700 milliseconds, sometimes over 1,000 milliseconds. That's a second of latency. Horrible for doing any type of live streaming, any type of chatting, Google meeting, anything. It is garbage. I've said that forever. And you guys have told me the exact same thing that have Viasat and HughesNet. So anyways, I do believe that both of them will be going the way of the dinosaur. I think that it will take a couple of years due to people being locked in via contract. But as those contracts expire, so will these companies expire. Anyways, that's my thought. What do you think? Down below, let's have this discussion. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, like I told you at the beginning, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the very many years. Take a look at those, see if you like something, check out my merch, check out the teas, pick something up. I would appreciate it. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Stay connected. Love you guys.